Hi everyone. Thanks so much for tuning in today. My name is Roy Fantel, and I'm happy to welcome and introduce you to the Art Center's new and exciting series, The Art of Making. The Art of Making is part of the Center's new Arts at Home virtual program, which was created specifically for arts lovers of all ages, just like you. This new at home program will provide you with the fun and educational content to inspire creativity while keeping our community connected and active. Again, my name is Roy Fantel, and I'm a drummer, percussionist, and teaching artist. Today, I will be teaching you the basics of rhythmic notation. The first thing we need to talk about is, what is rhythm? So, rhythm is music's pattern in time. It's the one necessary element of all music. Let me demonstrate a little rhythmic pattern on my conga here. So that's just a basic rhythm. Now, rhythm can exist without melody, as in drum beats, like the ones that I just played. But melody cannot exist without rhythm. I'm going to demonstrate this by playing the rhythm of a very popular song. I'll give you a little hint. It's a song that you sing every year. Did you figure it out? If you said happy birthday, then you were correct. I'm going to do it again. This time, I want you to actually sing happy birthday while I play it. One, two, ready, go. So you see, you can sing happy birthday, but if you don't have the rhythm that goes along with it, it wouldn't sound the same. It wouldn't be the same song. So rhythm is the basis for all music. And then from there, we add melody, which are the notes that we sing for songs. Okay, let's start with two different kinds of notes that we use to create rhythm. The first note is called a quarter note. Now, what I'm doing is very basic rhythmic reading. Some of you out there that may already know this stuff may say, but wait, wait a second, that's not always true, what you just said. Correct. What I'm saying is not always true. We're going to start with the foundation and the basics. And as we progress through other series, we'll get into more detail, more complicated, and we'll talk about more of the rules of music. So for now, very simply, a quarter note gets one beat. Okay, a quarter note is this filled in circle with a stem. Now, down here, I've written a quarter note for each count, one, two, three, and four. I'm going to count to four, and I'm going to clap this rhythm in the same speed that I count. Ready? You can try with me at home. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So I just clapped a quarter note for every count of four. And again, right now, we're going to be dealing with four counts. That's the way most popular music is in our country especially. So again, as we get into this further, you'll learn that there are, there's music with other counts, but for this episode, we're going to be dealing with four counts. So that's the quarter note. One beat per count. Let's try it one more time. One, two, clap along. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Very good. Okay. The next note we're going to talk about is the half note. The half note looks like the quarter note, except it's a hollow circle with a stem instead of a solid circle with a stem. The half note gets two beats, or in this case, two counts. So you'll notice I have the count listed here, one, two, three, four. 
that the half note starts on one, the next half note has to wait till the count of three because it gets two beats. So the first one takes up one and two, and the second one takes up three and four. Let's clap this again. I'll give you a count of four. If you're ready to start at home with me, go ahead. Otherwise, wait and then join in. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, some of you may be saying, well, you know what? That sounds like it could just be a quarter note on one and three. And you'd be right, because when I clap, the sound is very short. It doesn't sustain. It doesn't last any length of time. For those of you out there that are singers, or maybe you play piano, or trumpet, or flute, or clarinet, or saxophone, any instrument that can hold notes, you would actually hold the note for two full counts before playing the next note. So on my conga here, it's going to last a little bit longer, so maybe we'll hear a little bit more the length of a half note. So I'm going to do it again by playing my conga. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So you hear the note last a little bit longer, and I was trying to stop it just before I played the next note. I'll do it again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay? Another way to think about this, we could actually clap down and then clap again. So the down motion takes up the space where the note would be ringing longer. Let's try it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, does that make sense? I hope it's making sense. All right, so let's see how we can put these notes together. Before we do that, we have to talk about some of the conventions, okay? In order to make sense of how these notes are combined to make rhythms, we have to look at how they're organized. Right? It's not, they're not just randomly put on a piece of paper. They're actually put on a piece of paper uh, on lines and spaces, which we're going to talk about in a second. So there are rules we have to follow so everyone is on the same page when reading a piece of music. So let's look at how we organize notes on something called the staff. All right, the staff is made up of five lines and four spaces. And again, some of you that know music a little bit may be saying, whoa, but wait a second, notes can go above and below the lines. Again, very basic. We're not going to get into that at all uh, because we're not really dealing with melody anyway. So we're not really dealing with pitches on the staff. We're just dealing with rhythm right now, which will always be, for now, on this second space above the top. So the space are five lines and then these four spaces in between the lines. That's where the notes go. Then we organize those notes in between bar lines. So all of these vertical lines on the staff are called bar lines. These bar lines create measures. So anything between two bar lines is a measure. Another bar line, bar line, this is a measure, that's a measure. So I have three measures here on the page where I can put my notes. All right, so I'm hoping this makes sense. We have the staff. This is where we organize all of the notes so we know how to read them. Otherwise, it's just chaos, right? We have to have notes on the staff placed in measures properly so we know how to interpret this so everybody can read music. This is how everybody reads music, right? We read it the same way because it's organized and there are certain rules that we have to follow. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the two notes that we've already learned placed on the staff to create a rhythm for a well-known children's song. Okay, you all know Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, right? 
So here are the notes on the staff. Here's one measure. Here's a second measure, a third measure, and a fourth measure. So we have four measures for part of this song. And I've written the words up above just so you can see how the melody fits with the rhythm. But we have to have this rhythm, otherwise the melody doesn't make sense. So if we just speak the rhythm without singing the song, let's see what this looks like or sounds like. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. We're going to clap this rhythm after I count four. One, two, three, 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 four. Now let's do it again, saying the words twinkle, twinkle, little star while we clap the rhythm. One, two, ready, go. Twing, pull, twing, pull, little star. How I wonder what you are. Okay, does that make sense? Let's try that again. Okay, one, two, ready, go. Twing, pull, twing, pull. Little star, how I wonder what you are. Now you'll notice that for star and R, where we have our half note, remember that's a half note, I held those words out the length of two counts, which is what a half note is. So we have our quarter notes, half note, quarter notes, and half note. All right, I hope this is starting to make sense. Uh, let's go and take a look at this same example with the counts underneath. So we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All right? Let's do this again, uh, and then we'll actually take a look at some rhythms without any words, just rhythms on the page, and see if we can figure them out. First time we'll do it with the words. The second time we'll do it with the count. You ready? I'll give you a count of four to start. One, two, three, four. Twing, pull, twing, pull, little star. How I wonder what you are. Okay, now let's do it with the count. One, two, three, four. 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 Now, for those of you that are musical, even if you're not musical and you want to sing it, let's do it again with the words. This time, you can sing the words and sing the melody at home and see if you can sing it while clapping the rhythm. You ready? I'm going to say the words. I play the drums. I get yelled at for singing sometimes. Ready? One, two, here we go. Twing, pull, twing, pull. Little star, how I wonder what you are. Again, twing, pull, twing, pull, little star, how I wonder what you are. You know what might be fun? In between this and the next episode, Write out the rest of the song, everybody knows the words, and see if you can write the rhythms underneath the words. 
Now, you can find places online where you can download blank sheet music, or you can just draw lines yourself, whatever you want to do, and see if you can finish this song with the notes. All right, let's take a look at some other examples, some rhythmic exercises that don't have any words or any numbers. So we're actually trying to move a little bit further along, get a little bit more advanced to see if you can do this without the numbers of the count underneath the letters. So this is a four line exercise. But what we'll do is we'll take each line by itself to start, and then we'll see if we can put it all together because music is longer than one line, typically, right? A lot of songs can be three, four minutes long. That's a lot of music on the printed page. So let's see if we can take one line at a time and then put it together going from one line to the next without stopping. That's the ultimate goal. Okay, ready? So quarter note, half note, quarter note, half note, quarter note, quarter note. This quarter note is on one. This half note is on two. And we know half notes last for two counts. So this is going to take up two and three, which means this quarter note gets played on what count? Four, right. Then we have this half note, which starts on one, which takes up two counts. So it takes up one and two, which means we're going to play on three and four. You ready? I'm going to give you a count of four, and we're going to clap this exercise. One, two, three, four. 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 Again, I'm just doing the first line right now. I went back to the beginning of the first line without stopping. I didn't tell you I was going to do that, but anyway, follow along. Let's try it again. I'm going to go back to the beginning of the first line. We'll do it twice. One, two, three, four. 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 Okay, I hope you all got that. Let's try, let's move on to the next line. We have four quarter notes and two half notes. Four quarter notes we know get each count. One, two, three, four. The half note on one takes up two. This half note starts on three, takes up four. We're going to play this line again two times. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Good. I hope that went well for you. Let's move on to the next line. Two quarter notes and a half note, a half note and two quarter notes. I'm going to move a little bit quicker, and I'm not going to tell you how to count this ahead of time. Let's see if you can figure it out. You ready? One, two, three, four. 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 Did you get that? I'm gonna try that one more time. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Good. Let's do the last line and then we'll put it all together. Again, we're going to do the last line twice. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, now we're going to try to read from the top, very first measure, all the way through 
to the bottom measure, last measure on the bottom line, without stopping. One, two, three, four. 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 Let it go. I hope it went well. If it didn't, just rewind a little bit on the video and do this again until you can play through it without stopping. Okay? Very good. All right, so that's all for this lesson. Next time we'll explore more notes as well as rests. Rests are symbols that tell you where not to play, right? Because sometimes we don't play all the time. Sometimes we stop. And those are rests. So great job, everyone. Thanks for watching another episode of the Arsh Center's The Art of Making. I hope you enjoyed doing this together as much as I did. If you like this video, please comment and share it with a friend. We love to hear from you, so feel free to post your own creations on social media. Remember to tag us by using our handle, at Arsht Center, so we can stay connected. Again, that's at Arsht Center. That's a wrap for today. Stay tuned for new exciting content soon. See you next time.